Hello everyone, I'm Fires Khan, and today I'm back with a brand new class. Today I'm back with something different. So I'm back with IELTS Writing Task 2. I was supposed to do this class uh, for a very long time, uh, but then, uh, you know, uh, we were so busy teaching O-level students, uh, but then we are back with Task 2. Um, let me just um, message everyone that I'm live so that people can join here and uh, you know enjoy the class, right? So I know there are a lot of a, a lot of you out there who uh, wants a very good idea about task two writing. Uh, if you have problems, this is the right class to be in. This is the right time to uh, look at things. Um, I have all the details for you, including a sample essay. I will show you how to write task two, and 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 it's it's quite simple actually. Uh, you know, one class is in, is enough for task two. I've designed the lecture in that way. Okay, so IELTS writing task two. Let's let's have a look. So let's wait for uh, some of our students to join. Um, Abrar, especially if you're here, just type yes so that I know you're here. Abrar, if you're here, okay. Right. If my students are here, just type yes. We are doing IELTS writing task two. Okay, we will have a look at task two. Okay, great. Let's start then. Let's start. So task two carries, first of all, it carries more grades, okay? It, 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 it I mean, it carries 60% of the grades. Um, it carries more grades, therefore it's more important. So, so um, uh, you know, you have task one and task two. For task one, you, you need to spend 20 minutes. For task two, it's double the time, it's 40 minutes. So if you, if you want, if you feel, that you know, task two is more important. You can do task two in the beginning, in the first, because it contains more grades. Therefore, when you write it in the first, you can write it with a fresh mind, um, and you can be more careful because it requires more time just to make sure that you've put um, enough of effort there. Because it contains six, let's say six points out of nine. Okay, six points out of nine, and task one will have three points out of nine. So this is double the weightage, as you can see. So um, it's logical that you spend uh, more effort here. So you can, you can start with a task two if you want, but that's your option, that's a personal choice. Now, candidates, if I zoom in here, candidates are required to write an essay of 250 words minimum. In IELTS writing, there's no maximum limit. You can write as much as you want. You can write 400 words if you want. You can write 500 words you, if you want. But the problem here is time is limited, right? You just have 40 minutes, not more than that. You just have 40 minutes. So you have to stick to 250 words. Maximum, uh, if, you, if you see maximum, uh, you can write no more than, you should not write more than no more than 270 or 280 words. Um, this is my personal advice because when you write more than 270 or more than 280 words, your essay can become, um, I don't know, complicated. It may become complex. It may have too many things. It may become overcrowded. Right? So uh, you don't want to do that. Okay. So uh, yeah, candidates are required to, to write an argumentative essay for 250 words, 40 minutes, please. Split the time. Don't use 45 minutes and 15 minutes for task one, or don't use 25 minutes for task one and 35 minutes for task two. Just 20 minutes for task one, 40 minutes for task two. Time it. So let's say you're not being, let's say you're not uh, able to complete task one, a bit of it's left. You've already, uh, uh, you know, ran out of time. Uh, you're done with 20 minutes. 
stop there, go to task two, finish task two, and then if you have time, come back and complete task one. I know uh, that there are a lot of students who spend a lot of time in task two, but then at the end, they just had 10 minutes for task one. Don't do that. Or, or let's say just 10, 15 minutes for task two. Don't spend more time in task one and then less time in task two or vice versa. Okay? Split the time. Look at your watch. Carry a watch. Wear a watch. And split your time. Very, very important. Okay? I have seen key basic rules, did you? But um, I have seen students every day, every month, sitting for exams and, uh, you know, making these small mistakes. So it's my duty and my responsibility to make you aware of it. Then if you go back... There are different types of essays, okay, in task two. Similarly with task one, like in task one, we had different graphs. We had line graph. We had pie charts. We had bar graph. We had histogram, okay? We had tables. Similarly in task two, you have opinion essays. You have discussion essays. You have advantage-disadvantage essays. You have direct questions. Okay, which is known as multi-part questions. So there are different kinds of essays, but you don't need to worry about the structure is the same. I will show you a way to write where um, everything will be the same. It's just that you need to change the way you answer the question a little bit. Okay, so uh, yeah, I will show you that. So we know the basic rules, 250 words, not more than that. Okay, 40 minutes. You get 40 minutes, not more than that, okay? And and these are the different kinds of essays you have, right? Okay? So um, let's have a look. I, so I will show you a subject here. So this is the subject. This is the topic that we have. We will use this topic to look at different kinds of task two essays, okay? So some people believe that unpaid community service should be a compulsory part of high school programs. So they, so this is the subject. So there are a lot of people who feel that when you're at school, you should do voluntary, uh, voluntary work, unpaid voluntary work. Um, it should be a part of your school program. It should be a part of your, let's say, A-levels, O-levels, or SSC, HSC curriculum. Uh, you know, working voluntary, uh, voluntarily for, you know, organizations, for NGOs, for banks. I'm just saying, okay? And the bullet points that you hear, these indicate the different kind of questions you may get. So the first kind of essay that, that you can have is agree or disagree, okay? You have to do one thing, agree or disagree. The second one is advantage or disadvantage, okay? The third one is solution essay. The fourth one is direct multi-part questions, okay? All the four kinds or five kinds, opinion, you also have opinion essays, all the, all the five kinds of essays follows the same structure, follows the same style. We will have us. We will start with agree or disagree, right? So the structure for part two is you start with an introduction. Okay, I will show you how to write introduction. Let's wait first. Okay, so you start with introduction. Now in um, uh, task one, you had in task one you had um, you had overview paragraph. But we are not going to have an overview paragraph in task two. After introduction, you, you straight start with body one, okay? Now, in case of here, agree or disagree, you have to do one thing. Either you agree, either you disagree, okay? So um, there you go. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So write that out. In, in introduction, you have to mention that, whether you agree or disagree. Mention that right in the introduction so people know. Don't don't um, waste your time. Don't waste your words. It's just 250 words. And trust me, 250 words is not a lot. And then in body one, you can, you can write, let's say, two supporting evidences 
of why you agree or disagree. Okay, give two points, why you agree or disagree, right? Okay, I agree because, because of this, this, this reasons, because when you work voluntarily for different organizations, it teaches you life skills, it teaches you um, uh, management, okay, how things are done in real life. So these are evidences. So back it up, back it up with logical evidences. Support your answers with evidences. Evidence not hakle to make grades deepena. Okay, so that's body one. Write two points and support with evidences. Okay, why do you agree? Even in body two, sorry for the spelling mistake. It's my it's typing error actually. Body two, there we go. Um, give one evidences evidence of again why you agree or disagree. Okay, because because we have to do just one thing, agree or disagree. So even in body two, you can give one more point. So in total, uh, in totality, if you look at, you are giving three points here, okay, of why you agree or disagree. And then have a conclusion, write a conclusion, a nice conclusion, okay, a short conclusion. Especially when you write conclusion, there are some words that you can use. In conclusion, in conclusion or or you can also start with you can also start with to conclude or to sum, summarize these are the vocabulary these are the phrases you can use to start off your conclusion in conclusion to conclude to summarize to reiterate very good word to reiterate okay so there you go this is the structure let me let me uh this is the structure okay simple structure four paragraphs again introduction okay give an introduction i will teach you i will show you and teach you how to write introduction so wait wait for that uh it, it's on the next slide Body one, so agree or disagree means you have to do just one thing. Either you agree, either you disagree. Okay, so let's say you agree. So mention two points of why do you agree, right? <laughs> and then in body two, again, write one point, so one evidence is why you agree or disagree. And uh, whenever you give points, do not forget to support with logical evidences. Do not forget to support with um uh with supporting points okay the uh, you have to give reasons right and then you have conclusion uh you know you can start your conclusion using these phrases these vocabularies like in conclusion to conclude to summarize to reiterate sometimes you can also write five paragraphs let's say you may have to add body three if you have to write a lot, let's say it's a, it's a very broad topic and you need to write a lot, you need to discuss a, a lot. So in that case, you can add body three in case, in case, I'm just writing in case, okay? So this is the structure for agree or disagree. And basically, you will follow the same structure for everything, advantage, disadvantage, opinion, solution, as a direct multi-part questions. But it's a shop gula act a difference, hoy. Just to me, jib habit to me, shajaba, to my eseta, oita different hobby. Baki, everything will remain the same. Now, I will show you advantage, disadvantage. Okay, there we go. So, write the introduction, same. Okay, uh, paraphrase it. I will show you how to write the introduction. So, let's say in this case, in this case, in this case, the topic is some people believe that unpaid community, community service should be compulsory part of a high school programs. So you can start off by saying there are a lot of people who firmly believes that, you know, voluntary work and community work should be a compulsory part of high school program. There are a number of advantages and disadvantages, right? So that is your introduction. In body one, for advantages or disadvantage, 
let's say, I will just go to the next slide. You can write, let's say, two, give two advantages here in body one. Okay, and support your answer with evidences. Okay, this is the advantage. And why? How? Give reasoning. And then in body two, give two disadvantages. And then again, support your answer with reasoning. Okay. You will write body three if required. If not, let's uh, omit, uh, let's let's omit that, and then write a conclusion. You can start your conclusion by writing in conclusion to conclude, to summarize, to reiterate. See, there's not much change with agree or disagree. So with agree or disagree, what we did was we wrote the introdu introduction the same way. Since we have to do only one thing in agree or disagree, we just have to do one thing, only one. Right? Either we have to agree or disagree. So we agreed in both body one and body two because we have to do one thing. But for advantage or disadvantage, it's two things. You have to write two things. That's advantages and disadvantages. So in body one, introduction will be the same way. Write it, write it, write it in the same way. In body one, we are going to write advantages and give evidences. In body two, we're going to write disadvantages and then evidences, okay? Uh, there we go. And then body three, if, if it's required, we'll write, otherwise we will omit that and go to conclusion. See, it's the same thing. Even for opinion essay, it's the same thing, okay? Write the introduction, paraphrase it, okay? Paraphrase it. In body one, okay, in body one, because in opinion, you have to see in opinion discuss both views and give your opinion so you have to talk about both views you have to talk about advantages you have to talk about disadvantages and you have to give your opinion so here you need to do three things in this case opinion essays are sometimes long right so you write the introduction you paraphrase it in body one you talk about the advantages, same, talk, of, talk about advantages. Let's say you talk about two advantages. Let me just label everything so that it's easy for you and me to understand. Okay, this is opinion. Okay. Give two advantages for opinion essay, okay? And then for um, in body two, give, let's say, two disadvantages. Okay, now the only difference here is the differentiation, the point of differentiation is you will have a body three in opinion essays where you will give your opinion. Okay, I believe this because, okay, so don't be confused. In opinion essays, you have to do three things. You have to give advantages, disadvantages, and opinion. So in body one, Right, advantages, same as advantage, disadvantage essay. In body two, give disadvantages. In body three, have a body three for opinion essays. Okay, so that'll make it five paragraphs. In body three, write your opinion. Okay, why do you follow the system? Why do you believe in this? Give your opinion. And then finally, you will have a conclusion. So in case of opinion essays, you will have five paragraphs because here, you have to do three things, right? Advantage, disadvantage, okay, and opinion. So, yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask me. You can write it down here, right? Keep it respectful. Keep it confined to only IELTS, IELTS task two. If you have any questions, you can write it down here. Then comes solution essay. So in solution essay, you have to do two things. How many things? Two things. So solution essay. What are the problems of introducing unpaid community work to your schools? Okay. So here we'll talk about the problems first. So, so, so you know, don't forget we are referring to this subject, this topic. Some people believe that unpaid community service should be a compulsory part of high school programs. So in case of solution essay, they will ask you about the problems. What are the problems of introducing unpaid community work to schools? And then what are the solutions to the problem? So there are two things you have to do in solution essay. Write the problem first, 
and then write the solution. So you will follow the same structure again. Write a nice introduction. Okay, in body one, what you do is, this is solution. Solution essay, so for solution essay in body one, talk about the problem first. Let's say you have two problems. Talk about those two problems, describe them, okay? Uh, put them into details. Solution. Then in body two, go to body two and, and since solution, so find solutions to those problems that you have discussed in body one. That's in body one, you've discussed about two problems. Now, how can you solve those problems? Talk about that, discuss about that in body two. Clear? Okay. That's how, uh, that's how it should be done. You don't need to have a body three. Uh, and then, I mean, if you, do, if you don't have to write more, if you feel that you're done with body one and body two, it's enough. If you see the word limit is okay, go to conclusion and then follow the same structure. So it's the same thing, right? Okay. So for a solution essay, you have to do two things. Talk about the problem first. Write an introduction. Okay. Uh, then talk about the problem that, you know, um, if you send students for uh, voluntary work, they may not be able to focus on studies. They may have a lot of things to do. They may have this. They may have that. Parents may create problem. Parents may not approve of it. So see, I've talked about two problems. And now, how can I solve those two problems, talk about them, discuss about them in, in body two, and then write conclusion, okay? See, we've already covered the four kinds of different essays. And then we have direct multi-part questions. Now, direct multi-part questions means you will have separate questions, okay? So the question will have separate questions and you have to answer those questions and it is so easy you have introduction answer the first question in body one answer the second question in body two there we go and then write conclusion okay describe the benefits of unpaid community service in school so have an introduction in body one talk about the benefits because the question has asked you to write the benefits of community service and then do you think that is it's a good idea? It's asking for an opinion. So write this in body two, okay? And then you can have, and then you can have conclusion, right? So, so in task two, these are the different kinds of essays you will have: agree, disagree, advantage, disadvantage, opinion essays, solution essays, direct multi-part question. And I've, I have just showed you how you can solve all these questions using just one subject, right? It's done such a, in, in such an easy way. Some people believe that unpaid community service should be a compulsory part of high school programs. You can take this subject and apply to different kinds of essays, agree or disagree. In agree, disagree, you will always have this kind of question. To what extent do you agree or disagree? You have to do one thing, four paragraphs. Introduction, body one, write two points about agreeing. In body two, again, talk about why do you agree because you just have to do one thing. And then conclusion. For advantage, disadvantage, introduction, body one, advantages, body two, disadvantages, give reasonings, uh, support your answer, and conclusion. Solution essay. Introduction in body one, talk about the problems first, problems, body two solutions, and then comes conclusion. In direct multi-part questions, what you need to do is they will ask you separate questions. So write introduction and in body one, answer the first question, and then in body two, take the second question. Okay, right. So if you have any question right now, Ask me. I'll give you 20, 30 seconds, okay? If you have any question, you can ask me right now. Any question. So this is how. This is task two. I will, show, I will also teach you how to write introduction. I will show you a sample. So we have a lot of time left. So, yeah. 
Sir, could we take a little break for a couple of minutes? Sure. Take um take a break for two, three minutes. Um, that's fine. Uh let me know and we can be back. Uh, it would be good, I mean, if we could finish this right now. Or you know what? I could go on. I mean, you can come here and watch it. It, it it's going to be there anyways. So yeah, and then you can ask me questions. So that's fine. Yeah. So Let's go to the next one. So when you write, when you're getting ready to write, these are the things, these are the things you need to keep in your mind, okay? If you have to write advantages and disadvantages, make sure you write advantages and disadvantages. Sometimes what student does is that they write a lot of advantages, but they don't write so, so many disadvantages. Let's say you write four advantages and you just write one or two disadvantages. And in this way, your essay becomes imbalanced. For example, let's say you have an, um, you have an essay to write and they've asked you advantages, disadvantages, right? Let's say you've written four advantages and you've written two advantages. This makes the essay imbalanced because the examiner will feel that you know more about the advantages, not, not disadvantages, right? So what you should do is balance this essay out, okay? Do not write four advantages then. Just write two or three, and then you will have two advantages. So in this way, your essay is balanced. Uh, because if you write more of, more of the advantages, the examiner will assume um, that you don't have the proper knowledge or you were not good at, at writing disadvantages or you had very limited knowledge, right? Okay, uh, so keep that in mind. Your essay should be balanced. It should not be, it should not be too positive or too negative. When you write so many advantages, your essay may become too positive, right? It may outweigh, sorry, it may outweigh it may outweigh the, the disadvantages. It may outweigh dis, the dis, disadvantages, which means you will have four advantages and just two disadvantage, right? So it'll outweigh it. Your, your essay is not balanced. So make sure you write a balanced essay, okay? There you go. Number five is tips. It's the same thing as task one. Give opinions when you're asked to. Do not do not give opinions when you're not asked. Write opinions when you're asked to. They will ask you, for example, in this question, if you go here, if we go here, they have asked you directly that, especially here, um, sorry, sorry. Do you think that this is a good idea? So they have asked your opinion. If they don't ask your opinion, do not write your opinion. Okay, so keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So um, yeah. So um, okay, let's come to how to write an introduction. Okay. So there we go. I have an example for you of how to write an introduction. This is the subject. The best way to improve health is to do regular exercise, right? To what extent do you agree? Paraphrase it first. This is called the background statement, okay? So paraphrase it first. Paraphrase it means, means changing the words, okay? It will mean the same, but you will change the words. So there you go. The most effective method in developing and improving health is considered to be daily exercise. Exercise has been quite popular with the younger population, especially in the 21st century. So this is, this is the background statement, okay? You have to paraphrase it. So for background statement, you need to paraphrase it first. Paraphrase means use this sentence, change it, elaborate it, okay? And then to what extent do you agree? It's asking your opinion. So this is your, the lines that are highlighted in green are your thesis statement, 
And then you can write, in my opinion, I agree that exercise is the key to health as it helps to reduce body fat and keep us fit. And that's the introduction. Do not make the introduction. Keep it less complicated, right? Keep it less, less complicated. Keep it simple. Write around 50 to 70 words. So read the statement, paraphrase it, elongate it, right? Describe it, stretch it a little bit. See, they have added their own statements. Do that. Uh, that's fine. And then to what extent do you agree? There you go. Write a thesis statement. So this is your thesis statement. In my opinion, I agree that exercise is the key to health as it helps to reduce body fat and keep us fit. This is how you should write the introduction, okay? Introduction is very important because that's a starting point. So when your examiners read the first lines, they will get to understand what kind of writer you are, okay? They will uh, assume a band score right uh, you know, when they read the first few lines. That's what I do when I, whenever I check an essay. The first three, four lines, I do get an idea about the student, about the writing capabilities. So make sure you do write a good introduction. I have one more sample for you, and, and let's have a look at this as well. So there you go. This is the question. Every one of us should become a vegetarian because Eating meat can cause serious health problems. The writer is suggesting that everyone should become vegetarian because we know that eating meat is injurious to health. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So again, we will write the background statement first. Okay, background statement means we will read this, we will paraphrase it, we will include our own ideas, we will elongate it, we will describe the process, okay? So there you go, this is your background statement. Eating meat is considered by some to damage our health, and for that reason, they believe all people should adopt a vegetarian diet. So it's a good introduction. If you want, you can add more, it, it depends on you. Please don't limit your creativity. Yes, there are rules. I will show you rules, I will show you what to do, but then, do not limit your creativity. Then comes to what extent do you agree or disagree? This is the thesis statement. In background statement, what you do is paraphrase, describe the idea, elongate it, okay, support it. Right. And then thesis, your opinion. There we go. In my opinion, although a vegetarian diet is certainly a healthy option, see, having a balanced diet, having a balanced diet, uh, which contains vegetables and some healthy meat is the key. 50 words. I feel this is a very good opinion statement. Ora vegetarian dikyo chai meat dikyo chai nai. Ora match khane chilo. Right? Uh, they did not agree or disagree. They were diplomatic. You can also write your um, thesis statement in a similar way, in a similar fashion. In my opinion, yes, a, a vegetarian diet is, is of course a very healthy option, but then, but then uh, having a balanced diet is the best. You can write it in that way if you want. Can you just give me one minute, please? Right. Yeah, I'm back. So, so this is the background statement, and this is the thesis statement. And this thesis statement is interesting because they, in this thesis statement, they did not take any sides. They were neutral. They provided a balanced answer. So this is also one of the style that 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 you can definitely follow. Now, I showed you 
uh, I showed you how to write an introduction in case of agree disagree essay. So what will happen if you have advantage disadvantage, or let's say um, uh, you know if you have advantage disadvantage or opinion essays, right? It's going to be the same thing. Let's say you have to write advantage and disadvantage as uh, into uh, you know an essay, and how should you write the introduction? So write the background statement first, paraphrase it. Okay, paraphrase the ba ba uh, the background statement, and then in thesis statement you can write the advantages are this this. Okay, you can just mention the advantages. Don't go too much into details. You can write these are the advantages. There are also a number of disadvantages. Full stop. You don't need to mention the disadvantages because you've already mentioned the advantages. The disadvantages will be there in body two or whatever body you write, you can just mention the advantages, right? If you're talking about, let's say, problems and solutions, again, in the same way, write down the background statement. Okay, you will have a background statement. And then uh, discuss the problem in just one line. This is the main problem. However, uh, the solution can be found by doing this, or there are a number of solutions. So you can just introduce just one line. You can just one write. You can just write one line about your solution and the problem, right? Uh, so that's how you can write the introduction. So the introduction will change a little bit, especially in the thesis part. It'll change a little bit. Okay, it'll depend on the subject whether it's advantages or disadvantages or opinion essay or direct multi-part, okay? So this is how you write introduction. If you have any questions, we can write it down here and, and we can discuss about that here, right? Uh, sorry, I, I got a bit of cold, uh, you know, for the from the last one or two days. It's normal cold. I always have it. So, yeah. So that's task two. Now, now we will have a look at a sample essay. Okay, we want to see how samples are written. So this is a very easy essay that I have selected for you. Many people believe that social networking sites have had a huge negative impact on both individuals and society. So the subject tells you that, you know, Facebook, uh, you know, social networking sites such as Facebook, they have had good impact and bad impact as well. Okay, there, there are both positives and negatives. To what extent do you agree? The question is, to what extent do you agree? You have to do one thing, but here they've talked about both the sides. Let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look. So this is the introduction. Let me see if you can see it here. I'll zoom it a little bit. This is the introduction. Okay, so this is the background statement from here to here. Social networking sites, for instance, instance is a good word, write it down, are thought by some to have had a detrimental effect. Detrimental is an excellent uh, vocabulary. Detrimental means negative. Okay? Detrimental means damaging. Detrimental effect on individual people as well as society and local communities. However, in my opinion, while I believe, so this is a thesis statement. However, in my opinion, while I believe that such sites are mainly beneficial to the in individual, I agree that they have a, they, they, that they have had a damaging effect on local communities. So here again, they're not taking sites. So they are accepting that yes, they have had a uh, you know uh, positive. Uh, uh, there are a lot of positives of having social media but then there are also a lot of negatives, okay? So that's the introduction. This is the background statement, and this is the thesis statement, okay? And then you have body one, there we go. So in body one, they've talked about the benefits because when we write, when we, when we read the uh, thesis, they've clearly written that while I believe that such sites are mainly beneficial, so, so the writer has taken both the sides. So it is evident that he will talk about benefits and then disadvantages as well. So first comes the benefits. 
with regards to individuals with regards to individuals the impact that online social media has had on each individual has clear advantages so from the very first line we know that the writer is going to talk about advantages that with regards to individuals the impact that online social media has had on each individual person has clear advantages so when you read the first line you know that it's about advantages right firstly Firstly, so it's a style of writing. You can adopt this strategy. Firstly, people from different countries are brought together through sites such as Facebook, whereas before the development of the technology and social networking sites, people rarely had the chance to meet or communicate with anyone outside of the immediate circle or community, right? See how uh, well thought out the answer is. It's detailed. They have given you reasons, right? People from different countries, people from different culture, they can come together. Before the development of Facebook, things like this was impossible, right? Just before a few days, I connected with some of my school friends. We went to school in grade one. And we connected after so many years. And, and this is only possible because of such networking sites, especially Facebook right then comes the second point so for the second point they've used the term secondly secondly facebook has also social groups which offer individuals a chance to meet and participate participate in discussions with people who share common interest so the second advantage is that you have groups in uh, facebook where people share common interest right and and you can join and have discussion meet people see the structure is so well etched out okay and in the first line they have written that this paragraph is going to be about advantages and then firstly we know the first reason is here we know the second reason is here right so this was the advantage let's go to the next one the next one is here on the other hand now when you're writing something different let's say you've talked about advantages now you want to write something different you can write on the other hand it's a good phrase on the other hand you can also write because shop shamai on the other hand you score let hamela hoye jabe tokhon examiner bujbe je oh oh on the other hand chhara ar kichu jane na you can write on the contrary on the contrary or you can also write However, right? So on the other hand, let's see what they have written. On the other hand, the effect that Facebook and other social networking sites have had on societies and local communities can only be seen as negative. See, from the first two lines, I know that this paragraph is going to be about the negative development, about the disadvantages, OK? Rather than individual people taking part in the local community, they're instead choosing to take more interest in people online. Consequently, consequently is a good word, the people with the local communities are no longer forming close or supportive relationship. Furthermore, society as a whole is becoming increasingly disjointed and fragmented as people spend more time with people they have never met face to face and who they're unlikely to meet uh, in the future. So this person has just written one disadvantage, but he has explained, he or she has explained the disadvantage thoroughly. So if we go back, there were two advantages and one disadvantage. So it's clearly balanced out, but, but see how this one disadvantage is explained so much in every line, it is explained thoroughly. Yes, how people spend more time online instead of meeting them face to face. People don't go out for activities. People don't play games. They're just inside their house, inside their home, finding people online, talking to them online, um, ra rather than meeting them face to face. And then comes the last but not the least conclusion. To conclude, all those social networking sites have brought individuals closer together. They have had they have not had the same effect on society or local communities. Local communities should do more to try and involve local people in local activities.
okay? In order to promote the future of community life. So they have written a good introduction and see the introduction they've started with to conclude. So you can write to conclude, in conclusion, to summarize, to reiterate. You can use all those phrases and then write a balanced conclusion that, you know, they have, ha they have negatives, they have positives, but we have to be careful when using social media. So this is a good sample, okay? So yeah, we are done with task two, writing. I will be back again tomorrow um, to discuss, to show you more samples. We're done with task two, but I want to show you more samples um, and explain you, right? Okay, so this is task two. So task two has 40 minutes. It carries more points, six points. Task one has three points. So make sure you spend more time in this. Okay, there are different kinds of essays here. Agree, disagree, advantage, disadvantage, opinion, solution essay, direct multipart. And I've showed you how to answer it, okay? Using the same subject. We've talked about what, what, what are the things that you need to keep in your mind. We've showed you how to write an introduction statement with some samples. And I've also showed you a sample essay, okay? If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me any questions. Um, can you give me just one minute? I think I have more to share with you. I think I have one document to share with you. Just let me see. Yeah, great. Yes, I have one document to share with you. So just give me one minute. OK, I will stop sharing this. And I will, okay. So, yeah. So this is a list of vocabulary, list of linking word that you need when you write task two. Okay, I will put it in the link in the comment section. I will post it there. Um, just see the different kinds of linking words that you have. If you want to list, if you want to order, you can start with firstly, secondly, thirdly, fourthly. If you want to talk about results, you can write as a result, consequently, therefore. If you want to add more information, you can write in addition, additionally, furthermore. If you want to give examples, you can write, for example, for instance. Why am I giving you this? Because you cannot repeat your vocabulary. If you repeat your vocabulary, it's going to be problematic. It's going to be a big problem. OK, so you cannot repeat your vocabulary. So in order to give you variety, you can use this. OK, right. So um, if you want to write contrasting sentence, you can write however, nevertheless, even though on the contrary, on the contrary. Uh, so, yeah, so use linking words. Linking words will make your essay uh, look more uh, polished. OK, but you should know how to use them. Don't overuse them. I've seen candidates. Um, Sorry for closing the uh, screen. I have seen candidates, um, you know, I've seen candidates overusing it, and 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 therefore, uh, you know, uh, it's it's a big problem. So don't overuse, don't overuse linking words. Okay. So we've finished the class. If you have any questions, if you have any queries, please write it down here. I hope I was able to explain you task two. I will come back again tomorrow to show you more samples. Okay. Uh, yes, Abrar, I will email you email it to you right now. I will also post it on the link here. Right. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next class.